Hello, tech fans. I'm Dave Graveline, and this is ITTV. Don't forget that in addition to this weekly video update, we also host a three-hour radio program. Into Tomorrow is heard on nearly 200 radio stations in the U.S., stations in Canada, the five American forces networks worldwide, and many online podcast and stream sources. Stop by our site at intotomorrow.com for more information and how you can listen to the show anytime, including using our free apps. One of the biggest complaints people have about cell phones is many times not being able to use the on-screen keyboards without misspellings and typos. Well, Chris took a look at an external Bluetooth keyboard for the iPhone and is here to let us know what he thought in this week's Product Spotlight. If you're like me and have fat, clumsy fingers, typing on an on-screen keyboard on your phone can be challenging. My text messages and emails are constantly filled with typos. Sometimes that tactile feedback of an actual button that you can push can make all the difference in the world. I've used several different iPhone keyboards in the past and have had mediocre success with most of them. One of the latest I've been playing with is the Magneti Bluetooth keyboard for the iPhone 5 and 5S from Moguls Mobile. This product line was started by Damon John, one of the stars of ABC's Shark Tank. One of the first things you notice about this keyboard is its slim profile. The keyboard comes with a case for your phone and has magnets on both so that you can attach your keyboard to your phone and keep it with you. When you're done typing, it sort of slides behind the phone out of the way. And that's really the only part that worries me a little bit. While I think it's a great feature, if you're not careful, especially when pulling the phone out of your pocket, the keyboard can separate from the phone and you may drop it. So just be careful if you do put your phone in your pocket. The keyboard pairs easily with your phone and works with any app such as email, web browsing, note taking, and others. There are even buttons on the keyboard for things like screen brightness. The keyboard itself is backlit, which can really help if you're trying to type in a dark room. You can turn the backlight on and off to help save the battery on the keyboard. When you do need to recharge it, you can plug it into any USB port or charger. All in all, it's a great little keyboard. It may be a little pricey at about 75 bucks, but especially for the professional who will use it all the time, it's probably worth it. There are still a lot of people out there who prefer a physical keyboard and just can't get used to typing on a screen. What do you think? Do you see yourself using one of these keyboards? Let us know by leaving your comments below or calling our Ask Dave hotline. We love it when you participate on the program and we send out prizes every week to those who do. So pick up the phone and call us anytime, 24-7, 1-800-899-INTO. You can even Skype into us from anywhere around the world if you'd like. That's 1-800-899-4686. Remember that our free Into Tomorrow app is available and preferred too, to send us an audio question from anywhere in the world. Get social with us too. Visit us on Facebook at fb.com slash into tomorrow. Make sure you hit that like button while you're there. It only takes a second and we love it when you like us. Then head on over to our official Twitter feed at IT Radio Show. We love interacting with our audience. Chris is back again to help us take a look back at some of the biggest achievements in the tech world with his feature, This Week in Tech History including a tech milestone that led to the internet as we know it. This week in 1925, television was beamed to London for the first time. If you put everything into it except the kitchen sink, you'd have the transmitter that was used. To build the transmitter, John Baird used a tea chest, a biscuit box, darning needles, piano wire, motorcycle lamp, lenses, old electric motors, cardboard scanning discs, and glue, string, and sealing wax. In 1955 this week, the microwave oven was introduced in Mansfield, Ohio at the corporate headquarters of the Tappan Company. The manufacturer slapped a $1,200 price tag on the appliance, which would ring in at over $10,000 today. In 1969, the first ever computer-to-computer -computer link is established on ARPANET, the precursor to the internet. In 1987 this week, in Japan, NEC released the first 16-bit fourth-generation video game console the PC Engine, which was later sold in other markets under the name TurboGrafx-16. And this week in 1998, ATSC HD TV broadcasting in the US was inaugurated with the launch of the STS-95 Space Shuttle mission. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History, brought to you by IFA Berlin, the global show for consumer tech and home appliances and the official partner of the future. 
Get more info at ifa-berlin.com. Have you thanked a military service member lately? Remember that Into Tomorrow has an ongoing Support Our Troops campaign. Log on to our site at intotomorrow.com and click the Support Our Troops link at the bottom of the page. That'll take you to a list of ways you can say thanks to all the men and women in uniform that keep us safe every day. Don't forget about our free tech newsletter. Sign up now at our main page at intotomorrow.com. Just enter your email address in the red box. Be sure to click the link in the subsequent email that you'll receive to confirm your subscription. Well, that'll wrap things up for this week's trip into tomorrow. Make sure you check out our site at intotomorrow.com anytime at your leisure and visit frequently too, where you'll find links to all of our show pages and podcasts. Until next week, we'll see you online and of course, on the radio. I'm Dave Graveline. Bye-bye.